Last week was the beginning of an impossible dream. Naturalist Marty Stauffer was living in a remote part of the Rocky Mountains, studying and tracking wildlife. One winter day, a chance meeting changed his plans and his entire life. His surprise, he had discovered Colorado's last grizzly. From that moment on, Marty knew he had to reestablish the great bears on their former range, and he came up with a way to do it. He got his very own newborn cub, an orphan to raise, and eventually to release into the wilderness as a mate for the big male. He named her Grizz. It was love at first sight. Marty was the only mother the little grizzly cub would ever know. Together, they lived in a log cabin and explored the rugged country around it. At first, Grizz was confused by the world outside. Soon, she grew to feel right at home. Just like a human child, she was curious and playful, but her curiosity nearly got her into trouble. Marty had to teach her the ways of the wild, and more important, the ways of people, if she was going to survive alone. The season grew warmer, the pair moved into a lean-to in the high country. Marty continued his studies, while Grizz began to venture out on her own. Marty's dream had seemed simple enough, but he had never counted on all the little things a grizzly bear needed to learn. Fortunately, Grizz was a willing student. And as the months passed, she was becoming very self-reliant. This week, Join Marty and Grizz for the conclusion of their true story as she learns one last lesson, a sad but vital part of survival. See how the impossible dream just might come true for the man who loved bears. One day, the little cub wandered into serious danger, a mountain lion. Grizz was completely unaware of danger. Grizz had turned into a spunky little bear. Uh, 
After that fight, it seemed like Grizz got to thinking she might have escaped by climbing a tree. She didn't know that mountain lions are great climbers, and grizzlies are terrible. A grown grizzly can't climb at all, and their cubs can only climb trees with lots of limbs. Grizzly cubs are like human children. They love to explore creeks and streams. But I felt Grizz should start to get serious about it. There are fish in these waters, and she needed to know how to catch them. Trout often hide under rocks, and I tried to show the cub how to find them. I didn't think she understood. What's that, Grizz? A fish? Hey, now you've got the idea. One of the best ways to get to know the geography of a wilderness area is to understand the creeks and streams. So Marty and Grizz explored them all. The wild creatures, waterways, are highways, meeting places, and for some, their home. Beavers were once scarce in these mountains due to fur trapping, but now they are protected by law, and they are coming back. If Marty had any idea of making undisturbed observations, Grizz quickly changed his mind. He was not a passive onlooker. He had to be a participant in the game of life. Grizzlies are good swimmers, but they aren't in the same class with beavers. This one seemed to enjoy teasing poor Grizz, who started the whole thing. And the beaver had had enough, he just submerged and went into his house to an underwater entrance. It didn't take long for Grizz to figure out where the beaver went. But she never did find a way to get in. In the wilderness, where people seldom venture, many of the animals are less timid than those near civilization. The trick to getting close to them, Marty says, is to remain very still. Shh! Quiet, Grizz. That's a hummingbird. It gets food out of the blossoms. Hey, stop! That's hummingbird food. You're supposed to look at it. Not eat it. Grown bears are supposed to enjoy the beauty of flowers but cubs think of two things only, food and fun. During that summer, the cub survived many natural dangers. Now, she was to face the greatest danger yet, domestic sheep. Not that a sheep could ever harm a grizzly, but a sheep herder would they have driven their flocks into the deepest recesses of wilderness, and then they kill the native animals for trespassing. It all began with a coyote innocently hunting ground squirrels. Coyotes live mainly on small rodents. He makes a catch. 
In many wilderness areas, the predatory animals, like coyotes and bears, have been systematically killed off. As a result, there's been a huge increase in the rodent population. Now, they often do much damage. The coyote is afraid at first. Then the wild dog relaxes and they play with a bit too much noise. Sheep herders all seem to hate coyotes, even though this one had never bothered the sheep. The coyote has not yet suspected danger. It was not the man who frightened Grizz, it was a galloping horse. To Marty, the sound of the shot was like a nightmare. It was a sound of terror which had haunted Marty's mind for months. Are you all right? Don't run. It's me, it's Marty. Oh, Grizz, I thought you were shot. It isn't fair. His sheep don't have any more right to public lands than the wild animals do. Marty was mad. Some guys think owning a sheep or cow gives them a right to kill anything within miles of their animals. At any moment, a shot could ring out, killing his dream. Well, look at this. Must have been an old log cabin, once upon a time. Hey, a bear trap. Whoa, this is a monster. It could break a leg. I guess this used to be a trapper's cabin. Aren't you glad he's not around now? It was a double spring bear trap, one of the cruelest devices ever invented to torture wild animals. Marty took it as a souvenir of days long gone, he hoped. At the time, he had no particular plans for it, although it later played an important part in his story. <clears throat> oh, wow. That's all I can do to bend these springs. Come here, Grizz. Look at this trap. Come here. Never put your foot in one of these things. Watch. Hey, don't worry, Grizz. It'll never happen to you. Hey, how you doing? Oh, 
Hey. That fall, Marty spent more time than ever with Grizz. His happiness was tinged with sadness. Soon, they would part as she went to a den to sleep the winter through. Autumn leaves turned to gold signaling the most dangerous time of year for wild animals. It is hunting season. And in the wilderness, a hunter came to satisfy some primitive feelings that he can enhance his manhood through killing and death. Right there. Let's dig. Soon, it would be the denning season. Only Grizz did not have a den for her long winter sleep. So Marty, like a good grizzly mother, tried to show her how to dig one. See, Grizz, you just dig. Come on, use those big hooks of yours. Grizz seemed to think they were hunting for something to eat. She seemed to get the idea all right but she would much rather wrestle with Marty. Without knowing why, Grizz had been preparing herself for her long sleep. Her appetite was ravenous. She'd eaten almost anything that could remotely be considered food. Bees, gnats, snakes, and worms, fresh green grasses, followed by juicy, sweet service berries. It all became fat, which would last her throughout the winter. During the winter, the normal grizzly does not really hibernate. Bears sleep a long time, but it is a light sleep, and they may come out of their den several times. In hotter climates, they often do not den up at all in the winter months. As the first light snows began to powder the mountains, Grizz would check her den over and over again. And one day, she moved in for good, as if guided by an unseen hand. Normally, the winter would have been spent with her mother and perhaps a brother and sister. But Grizz had no mother except Marty, and he, well, <laughs> he was not capable of six months' sleep without anything to eat. Well, so long, girl. Have a good winter's sleep. See you next April. Marty knew that she would be safe till spring with six feet of snow piled on top of the den. I spent a lot of time that winter with the bighorn. I wanted to study them while there were still some left. I also wanted to be near Grizz in case she woke up and needed me. It was mating season again for the bighorn, and I knew the big rams would be fighting over the females. 
They compete by butting heads. It wasn't easy to tell who had won, but they seemed to know. There were some pretty bad storms that year, and the Bighorn were suffering. They were weakened by hunger. The government had permitted flocks of domestic sheep to graze up there, and they didn't leave much for the Bighorn. I finally left the Bighorn country, I had to laugh at myself. Here I was, all roped up, and still worried about falling. And those critters would just walk out on the cliff as casual as you please. It was April when Grizz finally came out of her den, yawning and blinking, and very hungry. I was afraid for Grizz, and I don't mind saying so. She trusted people too much. Her love for humans would cause her death. I knew I had to make her fear, even hate, humans. Although it meant she would also hate me. The bear trap was the answer. I heated it in the fire and let it cool real slow. That destroys the strength in the springs. I didn't want to break her leg, which is what the trap could have done. I couldn't bring myself to hurt her. I knew that just the knowledge that she was caught, that she was not free, would impress her as even the gunshots had not. If she were caught in the trap, she would never trust any human ever again. And that, I believed, would save her life. Here, Grizz. Come to me. Atta girl. Hey, Grizz. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. She was caught. I could hardly watch. Despite my precautions, she was in pain. She was scared. She was betrayed. And she knew it was because of me. free, I could see that she was not seriously injured. I was thankful for that. Then she walked away. Grizz, come back. I didn't want to, Grizz. I'm sorry. <sighs> Goodbye, Grizz. My feelings were totally mixed up. I wanted her to be free, but I wanted her back. A year went by. 
Marty's work took him all over the Rocky Mountains and even up into Alaska. But the next spring, he was back at the cabin. You can bet that the thing topmost on his mind was Grizz. He had asked around at the ranches. Nobody seemed to have heard of any bears up here. His secret was safe anyway, but he had to know more. Was she all right? Did she stay in this area? He had to see her one last time. For many days he searched. Grizz! Grizz! Grizz? Hey, Grizz. Grizz, it's me, Marty. Grizz recognized Marty. There was no doubt about that. She seemed to want to go to him. Then she seemed to remember the trap. Marty understood. It was as he had planned. She was a wild bear now. It was a big male. The two, together. Marty was filled with joy. His dream was becoming a reality. The next step was baby grizzlies. That was the last time Marty ever tried to see Grizz. He thinks she's still up there with her cubs. Will they survive? Of course they will. If man will let them, for man has the power to destroy everything. Perhaps man cannot change, but he can come to understand that in true wilderness is the key to our own life. He may know that to love wildlife is to love all life, including his own. He may comprehend that there is in each of us a little of the man who loved bears. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.